Okay guys, it's time to refactor our application. From now on, make sure that you grab the initial code into each lesson and open the app.js and replace every time your Firebase URL inside here at the second row. Unfortunately, I can't attach a file that will have already your URL. So keep that in mind, do that in each lesson and you'll be fine. So what I'm going to do now is to grab my URL and copy that inside my app as I did in a previous lesson. Okay? I won't do that in each lesson, but keep in mind that that's what I'm going to do each time. So I'll save it. And now what do we want to do is to refactor our event factory JS and our home directive JS so that they will use the Firebase data instead of the mock. Due to the fact that we are dealing with collection, we'll use a method, a specific functionality called $FirebaseArray. So I'm going to inject, first of all, my URL, my constant, fp message, followed by $FirebaseArray, okay? And I'll do the same here. So I'll copy what I have in my annotation, fp message and dollar Firebase array. So far so good, right? So I don't want to get rid of everything else including the mock. We'll do that later when we are sure that our application works. So for now I'll just comment this. I'll declare a new events. We'll keep it empty for now but we'll come back to that in a minute. And the first thing I have to do is to create a reference. And to do so I'll declare new Firebase and then pass in, in as a parm my URL, FB message, okay? So my events now will be a synchronized array. Why synchronized? I'll tell you that in a minute. So I'll type var events equals to dollar Firebase array and the parm will be my reference that I've created above, okay? And inside my get all events, I return the events. And that's all I have to do so far for the event factory JS, for get all events. Oh, I typed an extra S here, so it was FBMSG, sorry about that. In our home directive, we were using the then function because you remember we were dealing with promises. We can still do that, but we do that in a different way. Angular Fire and Firebase re return a promise and to access the promise, we need to use the dollar loaded method. And basically these methods will return uh, the forced items in the array. So basically whenever the forced items for our collection are returned by the remote database, we will resolve the promise. So with dollar loaded, our function will need be no longer a success because the data will be returning immediately. We don't have a nested object, so we'll have function data and instead of having success.data, we'll have just data here, okay? Everything else stays the same. Now we'll go back to our controller. You remember that inside our app.js, we were initializing a promise, we were solving a promise with our initial data and we were providing that, okay? And in our events controller, inside the event manager controller, we were initializing the event list to be initial data dot data. Again, we need to remove dot data and we'll have just initial data. I'll save it and I'll go back now to my application. As you can see, the events are still being loaded and the manage events as well shows our events. So now I want to show you something even better. So I'll put both my application window and the Firebase data side by side, and we'll take a look at something called three-way data binding. So now we are looking on the left side at our event list, and on the right side, we have our database, which is a remote database. When I talk about synchronized array, it means that no matter what changes, if we change the data on the database side, or if we change it in the view, and therefore we're changing the model, the array will still be in sync. And that's called three-way data binding. 
if two-way data binding was related to model and view, now we have model, view, and database as well. So you don't believe me? Let's check. So let's see the first item, which is Metallica in concert, and I'll change it to be, I don't know, Iron Maiden in concert. So whenever I enter that, you see that there's a new color because it tells me that it's being updated, and then, whoa, the application now is showing Iron Maiden. So whatever happens to the data is automatically synchronized in our Angular application. It's great, isn't it? So if we want to see what happens when we update the data from the application, we'll take a look at that in a minute. In the next lesson, we are going to modify as well our edit function and our add function and our delete. When dealing with synchronized array, keep in mind that it's a pseudo read-only array. What does that mean? It means that you shouldn't use the native array functionality in JavaScript to alter the array, so stay away from push, stay away from splice, because Firebase has its own way to deal with those. And we're going to do that in the next lesson.